Good morning. I invite you to join with me in prayer. Gracious God, source of all comfort and joy, on this third Sunday of Advent, we ask you to prepare us for your coming. Help us to be alert and sensitive to your constant presence in our lives. Come to us, abide with us, by giving us a yearning spirit so that we might experience the joy of your grace and goodness in ways that we have never experienced before. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our minds so that we might discover who you are and what you are calling us to be and to do. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I invite you to hear three passages of Scripture from the book of James, from 1 Peter, and then from Romans. First, from James chapter 1. My sisters and brothers, think of various tests that you are encountering as occasions for your joy. After all, you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let this endurance complete its work so that you may be fully mature, complete, and lacking in nothing. And then from the first chapter of 1 Peter. You now rejoice in the hope of salvation, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise and glory and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you trust in him and rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. And finally, from Romans chapter 15, the 13th verse. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in faith so that you overflow with hope by the power of God's Spirit. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Oh, sweet Mary, gentle men, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior was born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were born astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, 
Comfort, comfort and joy. Who among us is not longing today for some comfort and perhaps a double portion of joy? These two words link together in an ancient Christmas carol that seems almost tailor-made for our prayerful consideration and practice during Advent of 2020. More often than not, I have music playing in my study as I do my work. Sometimes the music leaps out to me and grabs my attention causing me to pause and ponder, to stop and listen carefully, or sometimes to actually head to the stacks of books in my library to look up something that was intriguing from what I heard. So it was the other day when I heard the pentatonics arrangement of God, yes, rescue married gentlemen and gentlewomen too. Parenthetically, composers and performers during the Renaissance were not nearly as sensitive to inclusive language the way we are today. And yet still that ancient carol has a synergy between text and tune that invites both singer and listener to a joyful dance as they enter in to the Christmas story. The unknown composer knew the biblical story well. The text is a rather playful version of Luke 2, communicating that the writer understood the power of Christ's coming and what it meant to the world. I would invite you to take the time to look up the text of the hymn and read all six verses that tells the story of the shepherds in the fields and how they were drawn to Bethlehem by the angelic choir that sang convincing, convincingly good tidings, good tidings of comfort and joy. Well, we need to be comforted, don't we? Based on the most recent statistics, there have been 441 deaths in Kent County from the COVID-19 virus. 10,895 deaths in the state of Michigan, 300,000 deaths in the United States, and 1.6 million deaths worldwide. The tragedy is immense. The grief we feel is palpable. I was watching a National Health Department spokesperson deliver an update on the statistics the other day. And that spokesperson began to weep as she delivered the news. And then followed it with this gripping statement. That means, she said, the loved ones who have died will not be with their families this Christmas. And that breaks my heart. We are all longing for comfort, aren't we? Not because we are inconvenienced by the effects of the virus, but because we are grieving. We're grieving over what's happening. Grief and lament is real. Yet here we are in December, two weeks before Christmas. And we're needing comfort and joy. The greeting cards that we buy and send or receive, the music we listen to, the decorations that bless our neighborhoods, all seem to focus on the traditional Advent subjects of peace and love, joy and hope. Why, for some of us, Christmas is indeed a season of excitement. It carries with it deep meaning, and there's joy and fulfillment in it all. 
But for others, Christmas is stressful, anxiety-producing, and even depressing. After long years in the pastorate, every emotion known to human experience is intensified during the Christmas season. If all is well with us, then we are likely, likely to have a very merry and joyous Christmas. But if things are not so well, and we are dealing with personal or health or professional or financial issues, family dysfunction, the loss of a loved one, or the resurgence of painful men memories from the past, then comfort is surely, surely what we need. The dialectic is quite pronounced this year, isn't it? Comfort and joy. We need them both and we long for them. It's as though the Christmas angels are still trying to get our attention. There's a song in the air. And I wonder if we can hear it. Remember what the angels sang in announcing the birth of Jesus? Don't be afraid, for I'm bringing you good news of a great joy. Now think of it, the coming of Christ is the source of great joy. What an important image for us to ponder. I remember it as though it were yesterday. Dr. Bob Williams and I were having lunch together in my office at University Church in East Lansing. Dr. Bob was the senior pastor at Plymouth Congregational Church in Lansing. We had met at a wedding that I officiated when Dr. Bob and his wife Marie were in attendance. Over time, Bob and I developed a wonderful friendship that both of us treasured. We met for lunch every other week for nearly 10 years. We gathered either in my office or in his office. Even though he died 28 years ago now, I still miss him. I admired him as much or more than anyone I've ever known. He was wise, knowledgeable, and insightful. He had a peaceful presence about him that communicated love and joy. He was my primary mentor in ministry. Well, over lunch that day, I said to Bob, you always seem to be so full of joy. Even when things are challenging and difficult for you, you still seem to be able to sort of go with the flow and maintain a positive attitude. How do you do it? I have a hard time being joyful. Can you help me with it? I want to feel joy in my soul, but I don't know where to begin. Bob began asking discovery questions, which was consistent with his counseling background. He asked me about my family of origin and how my family dealt with difficulties and challenges. He inquired about my personality and temperament. He asked questions about my spirituality. He then gave me the names of some books to buy and read, and then we made a plan to talk about joy over the next several months. Dr. Bob taught me that joy is different from happiness. We tend to use those two words as though they are interchangeable, but they're not the same. Happiness is dependent on happenings, he would say. Being happy tends to be conditional on what's happening around us, or to us, or within us. Happiness is often a reaction to the behavior of other people, or a sequence of events, 
or the circumstances in which we find ourselves. On the other hand, Bob taught me that joy is a condition of the heart. Joy is that inner sense of well-being. It's the calm delight in the midst of difficulties. Joy is a spiritual stabilizing quality that transcends events, anxieties, or fears that are a normal, albeit unwelcome, part of living. Joy is the source of spiritual buoyancy that helps us to get through what we're going through. In our work together, Bob introduced me to the writings of Viktor Frankl. Bob had the distinction of being the very first American to travel to Switzerland and study logotherapy with Dr. Frankl, a Jewish psychologist who survived the German death camps of World War II. Perhaps the most salient point of Dr. Frankl's teaching was that people cannot control their circumstances. But everybody can control how they respond to their circumstances. Frankel's theory was based largely on the teaching of an Old Testament prophet named Habakkuk, who said, when everything, when everything is falling apart around me, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. Now think of that. When everything is in disarray, the prophet declared a statement of faith by choosing to rejoice in the joy of the Lord. Friends, every day, every day, we choose our attitude. We choose our disposition. We choose to be joyful or not. Joy is like a spring within that never runs dry. When my parents retired and moved to South Central Missouri, Big Spring National Park was just down the river a few miles from their home. The crystal clear waters from Big Spring bubbled up and flowed out of the spring to feed the current river constantly flowing into that river. Geologists estimate that Big Spring produces an average daily flow of 286 million gallons of water. Underground passages carry that water from as far away as 45 miles to feed that spring. Studies have shown that the water is carrying a load of dissolved limestone equivalent to 70 tons per day. The source of the spring bubbles from deep, deep within the earth. Joy is like that spring. It comes from the well of salvation that bubbles deep within the spiritual center of the follower of Jesus. That kind of joy is more than optimism. It's more than the power of positive thinking. So perhaps, perhaps the text of that madrigal-type Christmas carol that's been sung for centuries needs to find a home in us today. We need tidings of comfort and joy. Long for it, friends. Yearn for joy. Yearn for the comfort that comes from the Spirit. Enter into the journey of discovery today to find the well of salvation where joy will bubble up regardless of your circumstances. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Thank you for being with us on this third Sunday of Advent. We trust that God has blessed you wherever you are, and thanks so much for being with us this morning. We have been on an Advent journey, longing, longing for peace and love, and now joy. The dialectic is indeed pronounced between comfort and joy. Comfort and joy. They are two sides of the same coin that we are facing this day. And so I invite you to open your own spirit and receive good news from Christ and the Spirit of God so that you can enjoy the comfort of the Spirit that is within you, as well as being able to face tomorrow with the joy of the Lord. May that be the song we all can sing. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 